We always see food in Luffy's hand, but we never see him holding any weapon. Even if he held a sword, his hands were always craving for punches. What if he has a yen for striking his opponent's chest with a katana like Roranoa Zoro? Will his objective to become Pirate King be diverted? Or will his hunger make him both Pirate Kings and world's greatest swordsman at the same time? Well, let's make a start. I remember every single time Luffy says, I'm gonna become a Pirate King one day. He always raises his right hand. But now, we see a katana in his hand too. But he can't become a swordsman all by himself, especially not with a sensei who appears once in 500 episodes. In this scenario, what he really needs is a director who directs him the right path, or someone who exactly knows what you need. Garp, after leaving Luffy in Mount Kalubo with the Dodden family, a top dog in swordsmanship comes towards Luffy. Yes, it's our former Pirate King's vice captain, Silver's Rayleigh. When Luffy was practicing to control his rubber abilities, Silver's Rayleigh observed his dedication approaches to Luffy. As Rayleigh already knows Ace was his captain's one and only bloodline, he offers both of them to teach them how to swing a sword and most powerful weapon of controlling hockey. But on one condition, Rayleigh tells them to never be a pirate. Rayleigh being Rayleigh, he now doesn't want his captain's son to fall into trouble and die in the future. Considering Luffy's determination, Ace's relation to him, and Sabu's purest heart, he started training them basics of slashing trees and wild creatures. He also tells the trio to keep it a secret that he was training them. So, whenever Garp comes to visit them, he would be wondering as Luffy is no more interested in being a pirate king. After Sabu was separated from his brothers by his noble father's manipulation, Luffy and Ace went looking for him, and unfortunately, confronted by Blue Jam. Now, there is a powerful man who can save both of them from danger. Right in time, Silver's Rayleigh with his conqueror's hockey takes down Blue Jam and his crewmates and rescues Ace and Luffy right in time. Luffy explains Sabu was forcefully taken away by his cruel father, and it is very important to rescue him. This time having an advantage, they successfully arrive to rescue Sabu and prevent him from setting sail on the sea, which means Sabu is not attacked by anyone but rescued by his brother to not fall in the wrong direction. Now, after two years of exceptional training, they have become a top-notch swordsman. After four years, it's time to say goodbye to their teacher. The trio were so emotional, but Rayleigh tells them it's not possible for him to be a side of them the whole time. Rayleigh gifts each of them their first katanas and tells them to keep it with them as a gift from his side. Ace and Sabu sets a sail to the sea together at the age of 16, which means there is still two years time for Luffy to leave the Fuchsia village and start his journey. Instead of becoming the pirates or marines, Ace and Sabu decide to be researchers about the mysteries around the world. Their motive now is to learn about ancient weapons, which was the biggest mystery for most of the pirates. And even if they find some opponents during their journey, I'm sure they both together with their skills can wipe them out with ease. After making their names big on the researching field, Garp offers them to be secret informers alongside for the Marines. As this was a great offer for both of them at a very young age, they decide to help Marines by researching about the world and the mysteries of devil fruits and technology exactly like Dr. Vegapunk. Two years passed away. Luffy's wait for this first step to his journey is now on the line. We all know about Luffy and his huge appetite. He cannot survive consuming food as a regular person. So, to make much berries, Luffy starts his journey as a bounty hunter instead of being a pirate. As a bounty hunter, his first target was always Alvida Pirates. He exactly explodes out of a barrel like in the original series. But now he has three swords with him. Two swords holding with his two hands and the third sword holding with his teeth. Defeating Alvida was always a piece of pizza for him. He takes her and sets off towards the nearest Marines base, along with Kobe to collect her bounty. Shell's town was always famous for the name Roranoa Zoro, but Luffy never knew that he ever existed in this world. Luffy's face was holding a huge happiness as he was about to collect his first bounty ever. Luffy and Kobe hand over Alvida to Captain Morgan and collect their first ever huge bounty. While they were leaving, they saw Roranoa Zoro tied up with ropes on a wooden plaque. Luffy thought Zoro was a pirate and told him pirates like you always need to be punished. Zoro tells Luffy he is not a pirate, but was captured for a silly reason of which is the wish of Helmeppo to see a bounty hunter die craving for food. This makes Luffy angry as he was a bounty hunter as well. He punches Helmeppo and brings Zoro's three swords and unties him. This brings Helmeppo's father the thrust of revenge. The two swordsmen work together and slashes down Morgan without leaving any proof behind. So, they won't be considered as pirates. Instead of focusing on his crewmates or building up a crew, Luffy farewells Zoro and Kobe to continue his own journey. After reaching Orange Town, Luffy sees Nami who was running away from Men of Buggy the Clown. Identifying Luffy as a swordsman by looking at his three swords, she hides behind Luffy's and asks to rescue her. As Luffy is not interested in small fights, he says, I only fight for Bounty Lady. Please leave me alone. Nami says the men who are chasing her are the Men of Buggy, who has a high bounty on his head. 
This offer for Luffy made him engrossed. After defeating those men, Nami takes him to Buggy. Despite having Chop Chop fruit abilities, it's a sure lose for Buggy, as Luffy used his hockey to cut him. Seeing Luffy's power, Nami offered him another offer to defeat a fishman who occupied her village with even more bounty. Luffy nods his head vertically, and smiles exactly how I smile when you hit that subscribe button. So, please make sure to leave a smile on my face to bring up more videos for you guys. Getting back to the story, taking a break at Syrup Village was another jackpot for Luffy that brought him more berries by defeating Kuro and handing over to the nearest Marine's office. This also gives freedom for Kaya and Usopp, thanks to Luffy that they can spend the rest of their lives together discussing the sweet lies of Usopp. I'm skipping the Barite arc as there is no reason for Luffy to meet Sanji. Cutting to Arlong's park, we can see a bunch of other fishmen who had insane bounties like Arlong. This is where Luffy can make his name bigger by handing over these criminals to Marines. So, there is no stepping back. Swinging the swords around with his rubber arms made everyone confused. Not only defeating Arlong, Luffy leaves a permanent scars on everyone's body. Luffy also gave some share on Arlong's bounty, for she was the only reason for him to get such a high bounty. She buys the most luxurious house in the entire village, so she can lift up her head again. Nami can now spend her whole life with her sister Nojiko and her village citizens. And also, Foxy wouldn't challenge Luffy, because when we take a look in the main series, he only fought Luffy in interest of trading the teammates. As for now, he doesn't even have a crew. You might think Luffy was making a whole lot of money as a pirate, but no, he was just earning for his sufficient food. But now, as a bounty hunter, he is going to make a whole lot of billions of berries. It's time for the Alabasta arc where the whole game changes. The name of Crocodile was everywhere. People out there literally treating Croco Boy as their savior, the opponent who has the highest bounty until now. Hearing this news tempted Luffy to get his bounty, but the biggest issue here is the Baroque works. It is really a difficult task for Luffy alone to handle every disciple of Crocodile. But wait, we saw Ace reuniting with Luffy in the real timeline, so Ace and Sabu must have been around here somewhere as well, as Smoker is not after Luffy anymore as he is no longer a threat. And if you remember, Smoker was the one who actually distracted both Luffy and Ace to reunite in the main series. But now in his absence, Ace would sooner see Luffy in the restaurant where he was filling his tummy. Now to take down Croco Boy and his Baroque works. Our trio Sabu, Ace and Luffy need to work together. As Sabu is elder among the three, he takes a lead and makes a perfect strategy to take Crocodile in the very first attempt. The researcher Ace finds out that Nico Robin aka Miss Sunday was eagerly waiting to get rid of Crocodile. So. He made a deal with her when she was looking for a poneglyph hidden in the kingdom. She leaks the biggest weakness of Crocodile, which is water. Sabu, on the other hand, starts taking down one by one of the Baroque Works members. Now it's time for the main fight. When Luffy first faces Crocodile, he dips his swords in the water, so he can leave scars on his body. Crocodile, as he is full of mysteries, he managed to pull this fight for a certain time. But finally, he accepts his defeat to Luffy as he couldn't resist more water strikes. This news has been spread all around the world. Now. Luffy gets a direct offer from Admiral Akainu to be a warlord. Being a warlord was not a part of Marine nor a pirate. So, Luffy accepts this great deal, and now had become one of the warlords, as three of them are finally wingmans of Marines, which also made Garp very happy. So our boy Ace can no longer be turned into a donut as well. So, this is how the life of Luffy would change if he was a swordsman from the very beginning. 